Welcome to one of the past HC exam question videos. In this video, we're going to cover all the past HC exam question multiple choice questions from the 2001 to 2010 exam, and there's 18 questions all up. While I'm doing a second, I'll start reading the actual questions. Once I read the question, you get about five seconds to pause the video and attempt the question. After you've attempted the question, press play, and I'll cover the actual answer itself. And I'll give you a tip: make sure to read all the questions properly before you have a have a go. Right, so I'll read the first question. It says, why do cells contain many different enzymes? A, enzymes are temperature specific. B, enzymes are specific in their action. C, enzymes are sensitive to pH changes. D, enzymes are sensitive to substrate concentration. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. All right, so for this one, the correct answer was B. Enzyme are specific in their nature, and that's why we have we have for every reaction we have a different enzyme, which is why we have to have many different kinds of enzymes. And A, C, and D are incorrect because that's not the reason why we have have different kinds of enzymes. The reason why is because they are specific in their nature. And this question comes from is covered in the syllabus dot point that's covered in this video number one role of enzymes. Next question is in endotherm. Which of the following homeostatic responses would be produced by a sudden and prolonged decrease in the ambient temperature? A. Decreased uptake of oxygen. D. B. Decreased muscular activity. C. Decreased blood flow to the skin surface. Or D. Decreased rate of internal metabolic processes. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. The correct answer was C, decreased blood flow to the skin surface. The reason why is because if you have less blood at the skin surface, there's less heat loss in your blood as well. B is incorrect. It actually increases activity. A is just random. It's completely incorrect. And D is incorrect because it increases, not decreases, metabolic activity. And this video comes from, this question comes from the syllabus dot point, which is covered in video number eight, thermoregulation. Next question is, experiments were carried out to show the effect of pH and temperature on enzyme activity. Experiments also test the effects of chemical chemicals called an inhibitor. The results are shown in the graph below. Here are the enzyme activity and our pH, and here are the two different enzymes. One without inhibitor is this one, and the one with an inhibitor is the other one. The question is, the best conclusion that can be drawn from the results in the inhibitor effects are A, pH, B, temperature, C, enzyme activity, or D, enzyme concentration. So what does the inhibitor do? Welcome back. And the correct answer to this one is enzyme activity, effect enzyme activity. And we can see here that for the inhibitor, we always increase our enzyme, our acti enzyme activity. So here it's decreased, as it is here as well. It's decreased as well. Whereas pH temperature doesn't affect pH or temperature, that stays the same. It just affects the enzyme activity. Next question, this one. A small Australian mammal that lives in the alpine regions of New South Wales has specific features that enables it to retain heat. Identify the features that are most likely to be present in the mammal described. A, long ears, round the body, and long legs. B, short ears, round the body, and short legs. C, short ears, slender body, and long legs or D, short ears, slender body, and short legs. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is B. And the reason why has all to do with a decrease in surface area to volume ratio. What that means is the less blood you have on your surface, the less, you less heat you will lose, and if you have short ears, you have less blood flowing to your ears because they're short. Short legs, you have less blood flowing to your to your legs, less heat loss. And round the body means you have more inside your body, more internal inside your body compared to outside. So think of a polar bear that has a very rounded body as opposed to slender body. So these are adaptions to prevent heat loss. And that was covered in the videos 10 and 11, ectotherms and Australian ectotherms. 
Next question is this one. The flow chart represents one example of homeostasis in an NF theorem. So here's that flow chart. Which of the following does response X represent? So this response. A, increased rate of sweat production. B, increased rate of urine production. D, decreased rate of sweat production. D, decreased rate of sweat production. Right, pause the video. Welcome back. I just realized I made a bit of a mistake. I repeated the same thing twice. But the actual answer was a decreased rate of sweat production. So if you either answered C or D, you are correct. And the reason why is because in here, we have too high temperatures. So here we've increased our temperatures. So response Y was to increase sweating to make sure that our temperature goes back down. So now it decreases. But to make sure that it's kept not at a too low level, we switch off our, we decrease our rate of sweat production here to make sure it doesn't go too low. So X was a decrease in sweat production. So either C or D was correct in this case. Next one is four students were asked to assign a first investigation to determine the effects of pH on activity of enzymes. This is the design of the investigation is shown below. Here we have the four designs, then on A, B, C, D. You've got your contents, so E or S. You've got your pH and your temperature and your tube numbers one to six, and that's for every design. Which investigation is the most appropriate design? Design A, design B, design C, and design or design D. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. In this case, because we're trying to test the effects of pH, the most appropriate one is actually design B. And the reason why is because A is bad because we're actually only testing enzymes or substrates. We want to make sure we have at least three test tubes that have enzymes and substrates not them by themselves. Design C is incorrect because here we're changing both our pH and our temperature. We want to make sure if we, if we test our temperature, we would keep the pH the same. If we test our pH, we keep the temperature the same. So here they're changing both of them, which is wrong. Design D is, is incorrect because here we're keeping everything the same. We're not testing for anything. Whereas here, we keep the temperature the same, which is good, and we change our pH. And we've got our enzymes and substrates and everything else as well. So this one is the ideal one, so D is correct. Next question is this one. The sweet taste of freshly picked corn is due to the high sugar content in the kernels. Enzyme actions convert about 50% of the sugar to starch within one day of picking. To preserve its sweetness, the freshly picked corn is immersed in boiling water for a few minutes, then cooled. Which of the following explains why the boiled kernel remains sweet? A. Boiling destroys the sugar molecules so they cannot be converted into starch. B. Boiling inactivates the enzyme responsible for converting sugar to, into starch. C. Boiling kills the fungus in the corn that is needed to convert sugar into starch. Or D. Boiling activates the enzyme that converts sugar into starch. Pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is B. And the reason why it says that enzyme actions converts about 50% of the sugar to starch, so it goes from sugar to sweet, the starch is not sweet, so it goes from a sweet to, to not sweet with its enzyme. So if we deactivate the enzyme, then that won't happen, it will stay sweet. So this one's wrong because it, if we activate the enzyme that makes it sugar into starch, that means it's gonna get less sweet. Fungus is just, yeah, random fungus is also incorrect. And it does have, I mean, it has little to do with it destroying the sugar molecules. So B is the right answer. Next one is the graph represents the relationship between substrate concentration and enzyme activity for metabolic reaction. So we've got enzyme activity here on this side, and we've got substrate concentration on this side, and this is the graph, and this is point A right there. So here, A. Which statement is, in, in, is an accurate interpretation of the graph? Point A is a maximum level of enzyme concentration. B, increasing the substrate concentration beyond point A will not increase the rate of reaction. C, increase the substrate concentration beyond point A will increase the rate of reaction. D, increase the enzyme activity beyond point A will not increase the rate of reaction. So which one's correct? Pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is B, because here we have, so if we increase the substrate concentration any further from point A, to here we're increasing it, 
but we're not in increasing the enzyme activity, it's staying the same because we hit our saturation level. Point A is incorrect because this is not the maximum level of, of substrate concentration, we're still increasing that as we go. C is incorrect because it will not increase the rate of reaction, it will decrease it. And D is incorrect because it will not, yes, yeah, so point A will not increase the rate of reaction, that's also incorrect. So the correct answer is B in this case. And that comes from the third video, which was called Enzyme Activity Experiment, where we look at what happens with substrate concentration. Next one is this one, which at adaptation assists in temperature regulation in plants. Large leaves for cooling, B, increased production of seeds, C, movement of glucose to roots, D, evaporation of water from stomates. Pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the actual correct answer is T. You might have guessed A, but A is incorrect because the large leaves don't help with cooling. Large leaves actually help when it comes to getting more sun, so heating up more, so it's the opposite. The increased production of seeds is just random. Movement of glucose roots has nothing to do with temperature regulation. And evaporation of water from stalemates, just like in humans, that heats, uh, that warms us, cools us up, so this is correct. And this one comes from the last video, which was called Plants... Uh, that was not good. Um, Plant responses to temperature change, number 12. Next one is the graph. The graph shows information about four species of bacteria and their reproductive rates at different temperatures. We've got generations per hour here, so, and we have temperature going this way. Now here's species W, species X, species Y, and species Z. What conclusion can be drawn from this graph? A. All bacterial species can adapt to a broad range of temperatures. B. Individual species can reproduce in a broad range of temperatures. C. All bacterial species are limited to a range of between 0 and 100 degrees Celsius. D. Individual species reproduce in a relative narrow range of temperatures. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is D. These are all incorrect because bacteria can't adapt to a broad range. Remember, species, individual species can only have a limited range. And you can see that from the graph as well. They have their limited as opposed to a broad range. Individual species can reproduce in a broad range. Again, that's also wrong. They have narrow limits. All bacterial species are limited to range between 0 and 100 degrees. You can see it from the graph. This here is minus, so it's also incorrect. And D is correct because they all have their specific narrow limits where they can survive. And this question comes from the video number nine, ideal temperatures for life. We're talking about the optimum temperatures for life. Next one is which of the following sequences most likely correct, most correctly this represents the results of reactions involving an enzyme. These are the keys. So E stands for enzyme, P1 stands for product one, P2 stands for product two, and S stands for substrate. So is it yeah, any of these here, these combinations? Pause the video, attempt the question. Welcome back. All right, so you might have guessed this one, but this one is wrong. And the reason why is substrate plus enzymes is correct, and it produces product, which is also good. But here, this enzyme is gone. So remember, enzymes are not consumed. They can repeat the actual procedure. So D is actually correct. Here we've got the substrate plus enzyme with the product, just we did in the other one. Plus we have the enzyme which does not change its shape. It pops back into place and keep, can keep doing it. And the other ones are just wrong combinations. This one comes from the first video, which was all about enzyme actions. So video number one, role of enzymes. Next one is the graph models the effects of environmental stimulus and temperature control in mammals. We've got change in temperature plus and change in temperature minus, so minus and plus. We've got time going this way and squiggly lines and this says stimulus, which is here. What does this graph represent? The A, the reflex action, B, the immune system, C, an impulse pathway, or D, a feedback mechanism. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. So the correct answer in this case is the feedback mechanism. Because here we have a stimulus which gets picked up 
detect it, and then the response is to change it and bring it back to normal. And that keeps happening. So that was the feedback mechanism. Reflex action has nothing to do with changing temperature. Immune system, and it's not related. And impulse pathway, also not related. So the correct answer is D. And that comes from this video, which talks about detection response. So video number six. Next one is this one. A range of body temperatures of two desert animal species are illustrated. Species one and species two. And you've got temperature going increasing from zero to 40. What is the best description to account for the range of body temperatures in species one and species two? Species one is ectothermic, species two is ectothermic. B, species one is ectothermic, species two is endothermic. C, species one is endothermic, species two is endothermic. Or D, species one is endothermic, species two is ectothermic. Pause the video and attempt the question. Welcome back. All right, this is actually B is correct, because in this case, species one has a, a big range. So if it's 10 in the morning, it will be 10 degrees for its internal temperature. If it's really hot during the day, 30 degrees, then it'll be 30 degrees and everything in between. So it can't control its own temperature, that's ectothermic. Whereas endothermic means this one can keep it at a quite narrow limit. So this will be about 37 degrees Celsius. And I'll just drop finely on either, either side, just to bind it by a tiny bit. So B is correct and all the other ones are all incorrect. And that comes from the video number, I think it's number 11 and 10. So endotherms and ectotherms. Next is, is this one. The diagram shows one example of enzyme actions as demonstrated by the lock and key model. We've got A plus B, they come together with C, here they've come together, and here something else has happened. Which part of the diagram represents a substrate? This one for A, this one for B, this one for C, or this one for D. Pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the actual correct answer is D. You might have guessed A because this is usually how they make it, um, substrates look. But in this case, this is the actual enzyme. And you have two different substrates that come together. Here they have the enzyme substrate complex. And then now we have an enzyme which is unchanged and we have our products. So it's asking which one is the substrate. So these two are our substrates. And then this is the product. And these, this were the enzymes. So D is correct. Which process involves detecting, change, uh, detecting changes from the stable state, then counteracting these changes? A, enantiostasis, B, homeostasis, C, osmosis, phagocytosis. Pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is homeostasis. Homeostasis is all to do with detection and response and, and keeping a constant internal environment. In antistasis, we don't actually keep a constant internal environment. We make sure our body keeps working, but not by keeping a constant internal environment. And osmosis and phagocytosis are just wrong. And this one comes from the top point five, homeostasis, so read number five. And next question is this one. Some students carried out investigation to determine whether a newly discovered animal was an ectothermic or endotherm. Each student made one observation and conclusion. Which is the correct conclusion based on the observations? These are the observations and these are the conclusions. So pause the video and attempt the question. Correct answer for this one is D, because the temperature and metabolism increases when the cage temperature increases. So, and the conclusion was that the ectotherm, it's an ectotherm. It's an ectotherm is something that can only uh, have the temperature of the ambient temperature. In this case, when the temperature outside increases, its own temperature increases, and with it, the metabolism increases. That's how fast the chemical reactions occur. So, if it's getting a bit hotter, then it'll work a bit better to get to 37 degrees Celsius. Uh, a is wrong because it is not an animal, not a mammal. It could also have been a bird. So we don't know if it's an ectotherm just because it's not a mammal because it could also be a bird. So A is incorrect. The body temperature is 37 degrees Celsius and the animal is an ectotherm, endotherm, sorry. Again, if it's 37 degrees, that's good. But we don't know just from that information that it's an endotherm. It could also be 37 degrees outside, which makes an ectotherm. So that would be B is also incorrect. 
the temperature was less than the temperature of the cage, the animal is an endotherm. Again, it could be hiding somewhere or something else could be happening. So even though it looks like it's regulating its onboard temperature, it doesn't have to be the case as well. So C is also incorrect. So D is correct. And this kind of question is comes from the dot point of homeostasis and the endotherms and ectotherms. So again, number 10 and 11. Next one is amylase is an enzyme that catalyzes the breakdown of starch. As the temperature rises, the activity of this enzyme will A, increase until the enzyme begins to nature, B, decrease until the substrate begins to nature, C, increase until the optimum pH level is reached, or D, decrease until the substrate reaches a maximum concentration. Pause the video. Welcome back. In this case, the correct answer is A, because it will increase, because enzymes don't mine it, until it's too high, then it will denature. So A is correct. B, it will decrease until the substrate begins to denature. It has nothing to do with the substrate. It has to do with the enzymes. C is incorrect, because we're talking about temperature here, not about pH. And also, we're not talking about substrate concentrations. So D is incorrect. So A is correct. Last one. An increase or decrease in the salt concentration in interstitial fluid triggers a response that the concentration returns to set value. What is this mechanism called? A, diffusion, B, homeostasis, C, enantiostasis, D, positive feedback. The correct answer for this one is homeostasis again. Homeostasis is all about keeping a constant internal environment. Whereas in antistasis, again, there we don't keep a constant internal environment. We, there's fluctuations, but just our body can cope with those fluctuations. Whereas homeostasis, we actually keep everything constant. So C is incorrect, and the other ones were just wrong as well. So, a reason why I showed you where they come from, these kind of questions, is to show you that when it comes to the exam, you need to know all dot points, because all dot points can be put into a question. There's no one important, most important dot point. They're all really important. So make sure you know all your dot points for your exams. I hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.